Ban relak ko ban a palantok. A palawalame. A pal ye ye chulis. Lari ye charade ye. Charade ye. Ye chu charade ye. Palala tungi yendi. Christ risen. He is risen deep. Alleluia. The quarter of the day, again, Lord Palom Palacon and Changdari. Banaya took a deed. Thomas was loyal. Masaya Della, Gentle Dugas, your name was the country of Galiam we push. Opening song from a gift. Give a song from our brother Thomas Dwalluan saying, Messiah, yes, you can also take my sin to his father present. He gives the death a shame for his uh, resurrection. That's our song, seven. Uh, two seven six. Two seven six. Two seven six. Lingyan mute. Lingyan. Lingyan keyboard mute. Tell her 
creyendo y que hagan a mí que calor. No coge de llora con los animales bien que ahora me salen y que me te calor. เจริญคมเดกเรยก่อนเย็นพอเล่นบ่มีแลบปอดจับกัดปาริเจรอดเจยเยลานบาดาเนี่ยมีเจริญคอยลอดโตควายเย็นไม่เทกดาลอยจิน
Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through the same Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
family. Uh, the first reading will be read by Lip, and the apostle will be read by Joseph online or on phone. On this mountain, the Lord of armies will appear for our people. A feast with the best of foods, a banquet with aged wines, the best foods and the finest wines. On this mountain, he will remove the veil of grief covering all people and the mask covering all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Almighty Lord will wipe away tears from the free face. And he will remove the disgrace of his people from the whole earth. The Lord has spoken. On that day, his people will say, This is our God. We have waited for him, and now he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us rejoice and be glad because he will save us. Did you carry it, Quas? Young no quote. The Abana Queen of the Banana Yoga Yukonis, the Yam, Chiro World Dick, the Wichoga, Water, Kabak Walker, the Pine Jay Julius. Come at the Mara and Tim a year, two calls to go. Teach our lad year. Teach a jerk. Chadwell 
in lei e ha detto ai trovi e mi hanno detto che io ho detto che e io ho detto in vanno in vanno che Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. He's risen from the dead. This is the most joyous day of the, well, the Christian church. This is a day that Satan is destroyed. He is judged. He has no control over those who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Death has lost its sting. The grave can no longer hold us. We have overcome because of Christ and his great work, because of his great love for us, and the great love which is showered upon us by his Father, the Holy Spirit strengthening us in faith and love to be believe what he did for us is true. Yes, this is the resurrection day. This is what we call Easter. 
I call it the most wonderful day of the Christian church for celebration, for understanding God and his love for you and me. This text for today that we have is from St. Mark. Now, St. Mark wrote the sermons of St. Peter. So you're really hearing St. Peter's witness when you're hearing the gospel in Mark. Now, the true gospel is what God has done for us. In the person of Jesus Christ, he atoned for our sins. He made it possible for us to be in his presence. That's what that ripping of the, the curtain in the temple was all about. He left the Holy of Holies and he now makes his spirit dwell within those who believe and trust in him. God has done everything. Everything's necessary for our salvation. I'm going to review the what took place there over in Israel when Jesus rose from the dead. What the story really was, <clears throat> that's what the scriptures say. The problem is that everybody wants to kind of change the story. They want to find fault with the story. That's the sinful nature at work. That's the devil still trying to get into the details. But this is how it really happened. This is what the scriptures report. Mary Magdalene, Mary the, and Salome and the other women were going to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. They had stayed in Saturday, observed the Sabbath, and then at six o'clock in the evening when the Sabbath was over, they'd gone in and they'd bought spices to put on Jesus' body. You know, the spices are, are important for the burial process because the death situation and the rot and the smell is just horrid for a dead body. So they were going to put spices on Jesus' body, but they didn't know how they were going to be able to move that big rock that was in front of the tomb door now, it, would, it looked like a big, solid stone if you're looking at it straight on. If you look at its side, you see it was like a wagon wheel. And it rolled in a trough in front of the, the tomb so it would roll downhill and close the tomb. But you had to have a lot of strength to move it away from the door of the tomb. The tomb was a place where you laid dead bodies and then those bodies rotted for a year. And then you would go in and you would take the bones after everything else had decayed away, put them in a bone box, and then you'd put it in a niche in that cave. That's how whole families and many generations were buried and kept the family together. Well, they laid Jesus out in that tomb. They saw where he was, and he was dead. They had done the things that were necessary in preparing the body in that they wrapped it in linen, and they put aloe's ointment on it, about 75 pounds worth of it. That's what Nicodemus had brought with him. Joseph of Arimathea had taken Jesus off the cross and they washed his body and they wrapped him in those linen cloths and then they put this ointment on. And then they buried him. They put him on the bench in the cave where the body was to rest until the end of the year when they came back in and picked up the bodies and put or the bones and put them in a box. They didn't understand that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. This was all a very sad and really grieving situation for the one they loved, for the one we love. Their emotions were as far to the bottom as they could go. And then the, the women coming on that early Sunday morning 
they were coming to see that the finishing of the burial was done right. But who was going to move that stone away? Well, when they got, they looked up, according to what we have in the scripture today, they saw the stone was rolled away. Something had laid it over so that they could get inside. So they went to go inside and they saw that Jesus' body was not on a bench. At that point, Mary Magdalene turned around and she ran back to tell the disciples that somebody had stolen the body. The other women went inside. When they went inside, they saw two angels. The angel told them, Jesus is risen. He's not dead. He's no longer here. See the place where you laid him. And they looked. And he wasn't there. And you know, being in the presence of those angels and realizing now that something ha marvelous had happened, that uh, Jesus reported having raised from the dead, their emotions were at the top. But they feared and they trembled and were amazed. And so they came out of that tomb and they didn't say anything to anybody there. They hurried back to tell the disciples. Well, while that's going on, Mary Magdalene had gotten back with the disciples and had told them that somebody had stolen the body. We don't know where he put them. So Peter and John ran to the tomb. John tells us that he got there first. And Peter came a little bit after that. Of course, John was much younger, so that would be expected. Where John waited to, to see and was afraid to go in, Peter went barging right in and he looked around and what did he see? Well, he saw the gray's clothes laying there and he saw the napkin over that holds the, the jaw up during this decaying process that I was talking about folded up and put on one side. Well, he looked at that and wondered. John says he saw it and he believed, but he doesn't tell us any more than that. Then they left. Well, Mary Magdalene, after running and telling them, came back. And once they were gone, Mary went in she had been crying outside of the tomb. She went inside and she saw the angels. And they asked her, why are you crying? Now the angels, you have to understand, are happy. They had seen Jesus die on the cross. And they were elated that Jesus was alive. And so they tell her, you know, why are you crying? And Jesus himself comes into the tomb. And Mary thinks that he's a gardener. But she can't see through her tears and through her grief. And she's probably scared more than anything else. And she was asked, you know, why are you crying? She says, sir, if you've taken his body Tell me where it is and I'll get it. What she's afraid of is somebody came and took his body and threw it out there somewhere so the dogs could get at it or the wild animals could get at it and eat it. And she's heartbroken, crying, grieving. And Jesus says, Mary, that little word calling her name broke right through all of that and she says rabbi and she falls at her feet she just is so excited he says stop holding on to me now i have to go ascend to my father and your father 
to my God and your God. Tell my disciples and tell them I'll see them in Galilee. And so Mary goes and Jesus is gone. The angels are gone. Now, those ladies that left the tomb amazed and excited and yet fearful, they ended up in the streets of Jerusalem, working their way back to the house. Now, I've been to Jerusalem. It's a maze. And depending on which gate you go through, you can get lost really quick in that town. Well, Jesus shows himself to them while they're trying to work their way back to tell the disciples what they heard from the angels. And they're worshiping at his feet and they are just excited. Their Lord lives. Jesus Christ is risen. He's alive. Well, isn't that the most amazing thing you've ever heard? No wonder people had a problem understanding that. You know, the only thing we see when we say somebody is dead is somebody who's dead. They don't get up. That's not the human experience. But it is the first experience for us. It's Jesus Christ who has raised from the dead. He's conquered death for you and for me. He went to the cross for you and for me. He died there for you and for me. He died that we might live both here and now and hereafter in eternity. Well, he's my Savior and Lord. So what would I do to deserve him? The answer is nothing. If anything, I act like Jesus or Judas and disown him at times. I act like Peter who disowns him. My life is full of doing good and doing bad. Much like St. Peter said when he, or St. Paul said, the good that I do, I don't do. But the bad that I wouldn't do, that's what I end up doing. Who's going to save me from this body of sin? That's what we have is a body of sin. That's what we have to offer God. We don't have anything more than that. Oh, I know there's some that think that you've got to get yourself ready to be saved. You've got to do this and do that. You know, when you do good, then you become good. No, that doesn't work. You don't become good because you did good. And what is good in the sight of God? If it's not in Christ, it's not good. Oh, we may call it good here in this life. When you look at it and I look at it, we feed the hungry. You know, we help those who are down and out, suffering from disease, whatever. Those are human good works. And they're normally done because of our own sympathy for ourselves and our own guilt for ourselves that I could be that same person. I could be in that same situation. And that's true. And all the suffering, all the pain, all the death that we suffer here in this world, you really, that's God's alien work. That's the work that he does that you would say, yeah, that can't be God. He tells us his alien work is done to bring us to our knees, to get rid of our pride, to quit trying to contribute to our salvation and simply accept it. Jesus said that he came for the sinners, not for the righteous. Whenever we think that we're righteous and that we're good and that we, we deserve something from God, then we truly have blocked out God's grace and forgiveness to us. 
you are saved by God's grace alone, through your faith alone, which is worked by his Holy Spirit, through the scriptures alone. No other thing can help you there. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because we are told to do that. That's what we do as a Christian. It doesn't earn anything. It's what our job is to do, is to make disciples. Now, I know that there are people who think that by doing good, they become good. That actually goes back to Aristotle and before. And that's foolishness. Jesus came to be our propitiation, our covering for sin. He came to make us righteous so we could stand in the presence of God and not be destroyed. That God's wrath would not break out upon us but that he would look upon us and see Christ and the work of Christ to save us from our sins. He's called the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world because that is the motif, that sacrificial system that was set up after the commandments were given and the people found out they could not keep them. Why, that make the commandments bad? No. They show what God demands of human beings, what he demands of all. He said, be perfect, for I, the Lord your God, am perfect. Well, I'll tell you, the most perfect thing about us is we're perfectly sinful. There's nothing about us that's clean. And if anybody's going out there and saying, oh, well, I don't have sin, I don't sin, I, your pride is covering up everything, and your denial is not doing you any good at all. This is the day that Jesus passed over death to life for you and me. This is where we get the gift of salvation. But we don't get the gift, and we stick things in front of it so we can't accept it as being ours because of what God has done. We block the gift. Don't think your righteousness has anything to do with your salvation. If you have true righteousness in you, you have Christ living in you. And if Christ is living in you, then the works that you do are really being worked by God. You know, if you go back to John chapter 6, the Bread of Life sermon, which starts at about 24, 25, verse 24, 25. Those people ask Jesus, what must we do to do the work of God? And Jesus said plainly, the work of God is this, that you believe on the one he sent. Now he said, that's the work of God, not yours. That's his Holy Spirit's work, calling you to salvation. Strengthening your faith, sanctifying your life. You see, you were called to righteousness and you were called to live before God, that he would be your God and you would be his people. You serve him. Your life is to be one that you share with others, that you help others to know and understand the love of God. Your life is to be a living testament of the love of Jesus Christ. That's what the resurrection is all about. This resurrection is true. I want you to think of a couple of minutes about the, the resurrection itself. You know, the, the story that was put out was that the, the guards fell asleep and the disciples came and took the, the body. Well, there was about 15 in a guard group. The disciples came with the, the, the guard around it and pushed the stone open and stole the body is the story. Come on. First of all, look at the evidence that's before you. The linen was in a tomb. 
Who steals a body that has been beat to death and then crucified by taking the linen off first? At least if you're going to steal the body, you would leave the linen on so it wouldn't be so messy. Hmm. Now, who could do that in front of a Roman guard? They would certainly hear the stone being opened up. You know, the other thing about this whole story is that the women are the, are the witnesses. Now, back at Jesus' time, women were, they were not given any credit at all. You had to have three or four of them to make one male witness. And yet, every time the story is told, it's the women who went to the tomb first. They're the ones that saw Jesus first. Now, why would they tell that story back then? I mean, I would have told the story of you know, Peter and, and John, and they saw the linen and they discovered that. But no, always it's the women first. Why? Well, back then it was because it's the truth. That's what happened. That's what they were witnesses to. And that's what people of today miss the point. Christians are to tell the truth. It's not a lie. It's not some story made up. It's not some fable. It's not a myth. It's what happened. And it happened for your salvation. And you need to hold on to that. And you need to believe that with your whole heart. For it was done for you. Jesus Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Grace of God. And his blessing be upon you this day. And may he strengthen you in faith and in love. Amen. Christ, one of my own, one of the can me you. Send me and now We'll be seated. Uh, we're going to go pray for the church prayer today. Nate Connor Lacona Palke. Look on Tess, go Yay, Shay, you shall not a jailist. Come y'all going to ping Ling Bomb to the Al. Go Chakada, you look at Tess. Go Chaka Changa, me. Chakonen, Chakoy Shop. Chalia Podogwiz. Chalia Podogwiz. Chilia the Lord. Yes, you know us. Oh, man, who shall look at Charlie Jay? Nay, the Alba Bay should go or be a look about a Jay. Can I say, okay, Jesus? Connect with the Alba or Jay is Kelgaja. 
Wagaruru de Manichang in Umgane. Tinical Gako Tinical and Nadial Tin Chaffwine, a Jodian company I'll be monkey Lu, who be composed. We can a tea to Lu Korean, Pidian Charlie Jellies, Cock and Barraje. Nasda Kaja, no Barraje, Chikayeshu, Gelatic Dama. Right, other line in three, ten kelk and ideally huge in big pankian, in big yakian, kasher, in one general cup, she and yakian, who will be galloon, a big galloon. Ten kelk and ideal, ten charime, donga chaper we, young chaco and yakin, and who will be galloon a one yang, a year and a day, a guy do not make a con nayakin. The Kelly all can a conling and go to Guatiak or Baling. Tinny Kell could will call you Nigger Bullske, Manager Gadial, and Bigapos by Jazagar Kamnisham. Tinny Kell could we go to La Cumnuay Mon, Nigger Quarke. Many young Ramgumai will be glad to show. For the old name, could you go at Yak? A Lava Jimial, come out big and eh? Thing all Yaka Goy, shall not use Kurai, Quaram indeed. Amen. Banapal, Kapala, she is you, Connie Gaja. Guaram to Mialo, Chiruloske. A poor way. Right by the female than Nalo. Coming with my young Walame, do you love the finger to her car? She can love a little ping and winning her kin. She will go down by one thing. Can away yet? Go right do, long do, mana point do, can do rare? No, no. A banner. Well, I am carried for the money you can indeed kill. We are called going to rise, man of the Young the Cornell, young the court. Who could nearly a post? The bay a teat. Who could nearly buy name the Camille? The bay a look. Cornell. Yet it to be a Kamal to shoot one the gut to ye for the guard order. Amen. The closing song. One thirty one, I uh, know, two ninety. The closing song is two ninety. The rock of the age, who was five for our sin, and the cross said, In the battle, we have to go forward. In the battle, we have to go forward. Two nine, two nine zero. <laughs>
Hallelujah, Gerard J. Gerard J. Jesus Christ is risen. Yes, it is indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep our talk. talk. Uh, we've been through this uh, whole month, whole week, and today is holiday. 
ke jeye ke karso lis la chang ja wala ci dial ci ko tu ani bana ta kamal for this week uh, i do have a short trip we'll go to midwest I will fly to Homa, Nebraska, take the bus to Sioux Falls. And uh, the reason is to see my mom and bring it back with me to Salt Lake. And then within a month, she will be traveling back to Africa together with Simon Kudus. Uh, I will be there for a couple of days to make an arrangement for a shot or vaccination if possible. And if not, uh, we will be coming back soon to do the rest of the process here if possible. Uh, for that reason, I may not be here on coming Sunday Possibly. Uh, but um, if uh, Joseph will be prepared in case, because in, in Midwest, if I get there, Kit, Mom, and everybody need to be with me here at the same time to hear. They go to show you at 1, which is our 12 p.m., sometime 2 p.m., which is uh, the same to here. That's the condition 